The following special presentation of your hometown health connection, Community Conversations, Heal, Talk, Act, is presented by Buffalo Healthy Living Magazine with support from the Buffalo Federation of Neighborhood Centers, Kyramia Pet Resort, Circuit Clinical, Endeavor Health Services, Medical Society of the County of Erie, the National Federation for Just Communities, People Incorporated, Community Services for Everyone, Horizon Health Services, Spectrum Health and Human Services, Best Self Behavioral Health, and WBBZ TV. I'm Sandy White with John DeShulo. We have pledged to never forget the hateful racist attack that took the lives of 10 people and injured three others on May 14, 2022. Mm -hmm. To that end, we are holding bi-monthly conversations through the remainder of this year and hopefully beyond to engage members of our community in honest and sometimes very difficult conversations. Our goal is to better understand our complicated past so that we can create a healthier and just future for all of us. Now, last month, we realized just in speaking with one another how much our backgrounds and upbringing shape the way we think. Mm -hmm. We also learned how similar we all are in what we need and want for one another as individuals and families. Today, we're going to be speaking with two exemplary community leaders who can take us back into the history of our community. We're very excited about that and the impact the civil rights movement had on their lives and how being an African-American shaped their efforts as activists for positive change. I want to introduce Brenda McDuffie. Uh, she served as president and CEO of the Buffalo Urban League from 1998 to 2022. Had the honor of working with her many times. Yes. The Buffalo Urban League is an organization that works to ensure that African Americans, minorities, and disadvantaged individuals can achieve their full potential. She received her undergraduate degree from Buffalo State College mm -hmm. and graduate certificate in human resource development from UB School of Management. Brenda serves on several area boards, is a past president of Leadership Buffalo, and has received numerous awards and recognitions, including Buffalo News Citizen of the Year and wow. NAACP yes. Community Service Award. There's more, Sandy. Okay. Business First 40 Under 40 Award and the United Way Volunteer of the Year. And recently retired from the Buffalo Urban League, Brenda does not rest much, I will She's tell She's still you. busy. She spends much of her time working to improve our community through board and community involvement. We're happy to have her here. We're honored to have her here with us. We also are happy to have Brother Clifford Bell, who was born in Buffalo. Cliff, come on now. In 1929, and you grew up in a home of seven children. He is known for being an activist, entrepreneur, public servant, author, poet, business advisor, it goes on, mentor to me, to many, an active church member. And his accomplishments could fill volumes. I can also say he's a poet and a man of God who touched my life even when I was hospitalized from a near tragic accident. And what did I find waiting for me? The beautiful words of poetry written by Clifford Bell. Mm -hmm. I must go on. He moved and he owned and operated a successful dry cleaning service and, John, a sporting goods store. He was a senior advisor for the Small Business Development Center at Buff State. Do you believe this? A lot. Uh, the director of Buffalo Economic Renaissance Corporation. And Clifford Bell founded the Buffalo African American Museum. Love that. He is the recipient of the NAACP and the Buffalo Urban League Mega Evers Award, the Martin Luther King Jr. Seniors Award by the New York State Governor, with numerous recognitions and honors, including the Honorable Brian Higgins requesting congressional recognition, honoring Brother Bell on January 15th. <laughs> Two, you hear him in the background, 2020. Brother Bell is the recipient also of the Red Jacket Award from the Buffalo History Museum. You know, we need to just speak it out there. There are legends walking amongst us. Mm -hmm. In 2021, he was recognized as an uncrowned king, and I always thought of him as a king, 
as part of the Uncrowned Community Builders, and he received the highly honored title of Paramount Chief of the African World. Mm -hmm. He believes in fairness, John, and equity for all people and the lives by the following model. You want to say it together? The, this, this, this bell, bell tolls, tolls for, for the, the people. people. Now, Brother Bell grew up in a time when much of the country was formerly segregated, when blacks couldn't use the same facilities as whites or play in the major leagues. He says, yeah, we've come a long way, but there's still a long way to go. There certainly is. And of course, Sandy White, our co-host and the show host, really an award-winning news reporter and anchor, worked at WIVB Channel 4 in Buffalo, Can BC, Channel 4 in Los Angeles, Channels 2 and 7. <laughs> a lot, and a lot. A lot, all of it. He's now president of the Mustard <laughs> Seed World Consulting Group, the communications and award-winning urban, plan, urban planning firm dedicated to the transformation of people, neighborhoods, and cities. Yes. And board member of the Alzheimer's Association of West New York. And Sandy will be launching a new support team on in East Buffalo. Yes. And Sandy, we are blessed to have Brenda McDuffie and yes. brother Clifford Bell back with us for another pro uh, program to uh, share their thoughts and insight. Uh, we'll start, in case you missed the first show uh, with Brenda and brother Bell, we talked, and I think it's worth revisiting. I agree. What Absolutely. we learned from the terrible racist shooting that happened at the supermarket uh, and how, and Brenda, we'll start with you, how it's helped bring us together, what we've learned, and we heard on the other show that uh, maybe we need a plan moving forward. Absolutely. But uh, Brenda, what, what, do you, what do you think as we pick up on that? Yeah, I, I absolutely, we need a plan. And as I shared earlier on the other show, a plan is a starting point. Um, we have to have a plan. We have to execute a plan. We have to be able to evaluate, monitor, go back and tweak the plan. And we have to have accountability built into the plan. So we do absolutely need a plan as a starting point. Um, right now, there are a lot of different ideas and planning processes happening, and they need to converge. We need to bring them together. And bringing them together doesn't exclude or leave anyone out mm -hmm. because there's so many different ways mm -hmm. of addressing the many issues that face our community. But we have people who are willing to come to the table. We have people who are ready to listen. And we have people who are ready to act. And yeah. where you have expertise, we want you to utilize that to help us rebuild the community. When I came to Buffalo in 1971, Jefferson Avenue was still a vibrant business district. Still a vibrant business district. And it had businesses like Bell Brothers Cleaners right. that the community loved. You had Copeland Tires, mm -hmm. you had fish stores, you had tailors, you had barber shops, you had right. beauty mm -hmm. shops, you had every pharmacies Activity. you had right. everything you wanted you had sidewalks you could walk down you had healthy fresh fruits and vegetables you could buy and then over time yeah. those businesses closed and they were not replaced still standing is bell brothers yeah. cleanest yeah but you also but, have a library now oh yeah and we rebuilt certain things and you have the, the library the business media center, center. The bi apollo business mm -hmm. you have yeah, the housing but, developed by people inc yeah, there's still you know you have a cigar shop you fact. had tops yeah. you had tops market right. so a lot after of a long community Jefferson. fight say our market remember our market they wanted to make sure we had yeah. a supermarket in our yeah. community and I was there when, when, when Tops opened. We, it was a wonderful celebration. A long celebration. A celebration <laughs> of something finally that our community desired and needed happening. Yeah. And so I think the same the planning, kind the of planning comprehensive and planning effort that needs to take and place. listening to the community and saying, hey, I, th I think 78,000 people live in that community. We need more than one supermarket. We need a commercial strip. Coming out to the studio, you drive down Main Street in Williamsville, you don't have a strip that is not developed with 
businesses, and we are in a post-COVID era. These are small businesses. We have small businesses in our community. We need to be able to bring it all together. We need to be able to show our collective ability to work in unity and each of us using our specialties and gifts. So, so Brother yeah. Bell, I'll ask you then, as a member of the Buffalo Common Council for many, many years, mm -hmm. going back to what Brenda said about the development on Jefferson that has declined, from your perspective, having been a leader in the community for many mm -hmm. years, what happened to that area that well, led to the decline without that reinvestment to bring it back? Uh, stores being built out there like Eastern Hill Malls and some of the others where people could transport and go to four or five stores at one time, not having comparable stores in our community because people would not invest. That's another part of education. One thing about segregation that was good, if you could say good at all, it made a lot of black folk rich because people had to work with their fellow man in any kind of business as a result, they're supported. Once it was dis truly discovered by folks of other races that the big thought about America should be green, that's what turned everything around. This whole racial thing, when I, and let's go back to that plan one minute, because, you know, when people say plan, it, it must be a little more specific. For an example, they're talking about covering the Kensington Expressway. You're not in favor. I am absolutely. <laughs> opposed, I want, I'd like to see something done, don't misunderstand me, because anytime you put money aside to achieve something, it's done usually to achieve a plan that has been put into place where the money's gonna be spent. You just don't say, we're gonna cover Kensington Expressway, we're gonna put a billion dollars over there, and when we cover it, it's gonna be beautiful, it's gonna, they won't have to worry about the gas fumes from the cars, it'll go up and over, we're gonna put buildings over there to take care of that and we're gonna make it room so that people can go on there if they want to and have a picnic party, uh, uh, sit out there and eat their lunch with their family and all that, baloney, baloney. It's not gonna happen. You're not gonna reconnect the black community by covering the Kensington Expressway. They're only talking about covering the East Ferry. Somebody said, well, maybe they'll go further. What's the difference? I never heard anything like this. If people were aware of what was really going on, that Kensington Expressway should never have been built because the people that lived in that community didn't even know it was going to come through there. It was a plan made in secret that it was decided, we're going to build this expressway to get people to the suburbs and back and forth to the airport. And then they extended it and took it by my house, which I moved into a, a, a six, almost 60 years ago and made my street a cul-de-sac. You used to come in the back end of my street up to my house off of Northland and Fillmore. They put 198 West in there, cut me off completely, and cut us all off from going across. There's no cross transportation <clears throat> between, it used to be between Jefferson and Fillmore. See, so the people are not gonna ever get back together. You're, That's say, you're saying, Brother Bell, that that money should be used to revitalize the community based on what Brenda just said, to seek employment and seek other vital services. If you're going to do this and you're gonna spend this kind of money then a part of your plan, which I haven't seen yet, maybe it's done, I haven't seen it, is to, what's gonna to happen to Jefferson? What's gonna to happen to Fillmore? What is Bailey, even gonna to happen to Bailey? Broadway. What businesses are gonna go over there? Yeah. How are they gonna be supported? What's really needed in these communities that they can't get in the community for those people who don't have transportation to go out or anywhere outside? Mm -hmm. You know, that has to be done as part of a plan. So if you've got a billion, set up a couple hundred million to underwrite the development of black business so that there's services rendered in the community that are available. Health is a major thing. We've always been short on health, access to health and health opportunities. I mean, it's worse. The pandemic didn't help us none, it made it worse because we were the biggest victim mm -hmm. of that whole COVID thing. So, but what about the plans? I haven't heard anybody here or anyplace else talk about what they're gonna do with Jefferson Avenue. They're talking about covering something for a billion? What they're gonna put on Jefferson? There's, there's a lot of us torn up. They got, new, got some new housing over there, a few other little things. There's really nothing over there anybody wants to go to. All the stores are not owned by anybody in the black community. So there's no, there's no recircle there of, of, of uh, economic development. 
And I don't think anybody's sitting down and really working on that. Yeah, a well, plan is critical. Absolutely and and it's, critical. Gotta, it's gotta be it's, one it's gotta that be interests the community because you're gonna deport, I mean, uh, depend on the African American community to support this plan to make it successful. They're talking about building a stadium. That's another off the shoe, but just give me an example. Let's look at the money you're talking about building a new stadium for the Buffalo Bills. I want to know how many black folks are going to work and get a job out there? How many are going to get a subcontract to do any part of that development? How many are going to be employed out there in some of those jobs that are going to be available? And what is the offshoot? If you're going to spend a billion out there, don't, shouldn't you put some kind of information in that says a part of this is a fallout. Some of it should be helping the black community by giving them so much of this. They did that with the school development program that was relatively unsuccessful. Well, well, what I'm saying is that was the design was to give us so Absolutely. much that didn't work. But listen, it doesn't At work if you don't have somebody on the to job. To monitor it and yeah. to evaluate yeah. it and to hold people accountable. That's that what never, didn't it, happen with the Joint School Construction Project. It was designed, they had a plan, yep. and it was supposed it was to be opportunities, business, and job for the children, the parents of the children who lived in the communities. Yeah. And all the schools, neighborhood schools and other schools were supposed to be redeveloped. That part of the plan never happened. Never the happened. neighborhood schools weren't redeveloped? The schools were rebuilt, but the parents of the, of the students who went to those schools didn't get job opportunities. The businesses no. didn't. Because I know Tell the schools me businesses were redeveloped. That prospered. You say the parents of the I can't children think that went to No, got, they didn't. And the businesses, didn't. there were so many people that went out of business as a result of that project. Um, so, you know, a plan that's not monitored, that's yeah. not evaluated, exactly. that's not tweaked as it's things happen. So the Joint Schools and Construction Program you're saying was not monitored? It had monitors, Okay. but yeah. it was not monitored okay. and people were not held accountable. It, it never met all the goals and objectives it that were It never met intended. the goals. Okay, I it's got it. It never employed the numbers of people it that were. It didn't reach were, the goals that they were established no, prior no. to. And you know what, to be fair, part of it was that the workforce at that time was to come from the unions. The unions had 30% unemployment, 40%. Mm -hmm. You cannot take people who already were in and displace them and bring in others. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there were some real issues with how that plan was developed Move and on. more importantly, yeah. how it was executed. Hey, Brenda, I know that when you were President and CEO of the Buffalo Urban League, you did a great job of bringing the business community together, speaking of mm -hmm, monitoring mm -hmm. and plans. And one of the projects that you were involved in was, pro was Project Hope. And if we can pivot maybe this conversation to be more now about where hope is mm -hmm, with what you were able mm -hmm. to do with the Urban mm -hmm. League, how did that program work at the Buffalo Urban League and continues to work? Mm -hmm. And how can we learn from that to help all of this community as we look for that word hope? Yeah. Yeah, Project Hope um, was a, and is currently up and running, executed and doing a phenomenal job under the auspices of the Urban League and its new president, Thomas Buford and his team. Um, it is a project to bring services to the community, particularly around wellness, mm -hmm. particularly focused on mental health. Mm -hmm and it was brought to the Urban League prior to my retirement. Um, and it has particularly, it was brought during COVID and intended to deal with the issues that the community, black and brown people were faced in the community relative to all the impact of COVID, mm -hmm. not only on the physical health, but on the mental health the behavioral health, whether it were seniors who were feeling isolated mm -hmm. or people who were um, now becoming uh, very depressed and actively engaging in utilizing substances to medicate themselves and, and all the tragedies that resulted. That. Mm -hmm. Today, that team of individuals led by Melissa Archer mm -hmm. has moved, and not that COVID's over, but has moved to healing and helping our community deal with the trauma 
of what has happened at Tops. And they're located on, on Jefferson they Avenue. They have actually right a resource corner, center of Glenwood, of Glenwood and, and Jefferson. And counseling for Right, and they've gone door it. to door too. Mm -hmm. They go door to door. Yeah to yeah, seek I mean. out She's members of our community to, to make sure that they receive the support they need. Yeah. That's the thing, people need support. They need to see people who look like them. And they've used a network of community health workers. That project was a very good project, Hope. I'm glad and it you is. pulled that together. And it is. Because it continues to work well. And you talk about execution. The project was brought to, to me while I was mm -hmm. president, mm -hmm. and at that time we were going through transition. Mm -hmm. Thomas agreed that, mm -hmm. to the project, and he has successfully with the team at the Urban League yeah. so there's executed hope. it there's and hope. tweaked it, because it was a COVID project. And because of new needs in the community, it has just grown And there respond. are seeds everywhere, and when I look oh, at yeah. both of you, I yeah. think of all the work that you've done working on Dr. Martin Luther King program over yeah. the years, how you were all engaged with so many issues. Northland. Well, exactly. I mean, Northland, yeah, I just right. really but there feel was seeds. our baby. Yes, right. There, we, there were right. seeds are in the ground and continuing to grow in the community. So when we talk about community, there are negatives that we have to address oh, okay. and people have to be accountable. But we don't want to let it seem as if nothing's going no, on. That's in right. the community. That's right. There are seeds planted and you that's both and they are, are flourishing. They exactly. are flourishing. Exactly. You know, we were just at an event at Northland and you go into Manners and yeah. you go into There's the so training center. Happening. And I meet yeah. young people and mature people on the street every single day that said, I got my job. I got, I'm taking care of my family. I'm buying my first house. I see businesses the North that Workforce are thriving. Training center, which yeah. is a great that story in itself that people, and people don't even are realize thriving. that. Yeah. 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 I see people good. taking care of themselves. I see, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and people have vision for our community continuing to get well and healthy. There's a group of people talking about a women's health center mm -hmm. and having a holistic, comprehensive place that can take care of the needs focused on women. So our community is continually using its strengths to build those things in response to Even needs. Even though there are threats, they're using opportunities the and opportunities. And we're and resilient less, people. We exactly. get up and we keep on going. Yeah. I'm all about it. These are two people of purpose that we have here purpose? with us. Great yes. faith, by the way. And, and great yes. faith. Yes. And, yes. and, and Brother true. Bell, I okay. know that mentorship is very important to you. Um, can you talk about the role of mentorship in your life and how you have mentored others, including myself? Well, it's, it's very important, but let me go back to two other things real quick, and then I'll tell you about mentorship. Mentorship is very important, and those of us that have been able to achieve or to accomplish anything ought to share that, not as a challenge against someone, but just as a piece of information that really what it amounts to is being consistent in what you want to do. Focus on stuff. Mm -hmm. Information, education are the key to survival. Here we go again. A lot of things that people say about Buffalo is because they don't have information. Mm -hmm. They are assuming because of what they see or are affected by personally that there's nothing else going on. Yeah. But you know, not only do you need to seek information, but you need to ask questions. Okay. And people that are doing things that they feel have great credibility need to publicize and create activity among those people who don't. We're talking about meetings that we're going to be holding at Martin Luther King Park just to inform some of the block club people and other volunteers about how important it is when someone comes to Buffalo, they see a beautiful, well-maintained park with all kind of lighting and sounds and apps and things that you can get anything you want on your phone or You're on your... You're talking about the, Dr. Martin Luther King I'm talking about the park. park. But that's just one of the focal points. We have a heritage corridor that's being worked on that, that has the potential to set up the whole Buffalo community into a place where people come to check out Buffalo. You got so many there are historic a lot of initiatives places. that are there's, underway with East Side and, Avenue's and initiatives with the Empire State. There's Park. always even opportunity. Even on the West Side, Broderick Park is they, a they, treasure, they, a historical treasure. So community they they the grounds the good that that's happening on. and the development plans is so important because fake news can be created very easily now and people it and is, it can change the narrative mm -hmm. easily. It moves a lot quicker. 
rumors and lies always move quicker than the truth. There's something about the truth that people a lot of times don't want to hear it or don't want to accept it. But the simple fact about life is, my father told me when I was very young, Preach. be sure that what you say, that you say it in truth, because you don't have to remember its content. And that's true, because I was at the you house like and the, that, phone, the phone rang one day, and uh, the girl I didn't want to talk to. And so uh -oh. my father said to me, he said, it's uh, Mary on the phone, she wants to talk to you. I said, uh, tell her I'm not here. My uh -oh. father went to the phone and said, my son told me to tell you I'm not. I said, give me that phone. <laughs> We have about one minute left. Okay, we well, still just need let me more say, time when we were with him, you know? Let me tell you the importance of mentorship. People sometimes advance in their lives because they have chosen someone that they want to model their movements as. I think my greatest contribution to mentorship is my outlook and attitude. Mm -hmm. Because people always see in me encouragement to do better, to lift yourself up, to achieve to take care of your family, take care of yourself, go to church, get some, ask the Lord to bless you. You know what, that has been my whole life. Those things I just told you, oh, I'm not great, I'm not outstanding, I got some skills, but I've learned how to use them through experience, which is your best teacher. So I'm just using this experience as a model to people that come to me and say, well, Brother Bell, you did this and what you, and I still do it. They need to hear from me that it's never too late, that you got a, t a talent you can give, use it and give it. Well, I'm glad we could hear applause, from you. Applause, applause, it's Brent never Brown. too late. <laughs> use it, use as it. As we end this program, I, I will say this community conversation continues. And Brenda, I think you'll agree, we just have very little time. The lives of those people that were lost yeah. is not in vain. Absolutely, oh, absolutely not. It's going to happen mm -hmm. in this community and across the nation. I, I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. We mm. have to believe it and we have to act on our beliefs. Yeah and put it to action and make those change happen. And understand that we have no sacred anything. I'm sorry. To they, teach people yeah. constantly. We don't have, there's nothing sacred about Buffalo. You know, the fact they say, never happened in Buffalo. How can something like that ever happen? Stuff happens everywhere all the time. Mm -hmm. The problem is when it happens to you, the direct effect it has on you brings you and enlightens you to a whole nother mm -hmm. exposure. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened in Buffalo. That was a rude awakening. Mm -hmm. But it's done something that had it not happened would never be done. And it's also going to create a follow-up that's going to be as a result of this. A lot of people know more about each other. A lot of people have come closer together. A lot of organizations that never even worked together before mm -hmm. are working together now. Young people are leaving school and whatnot and coming and going from door to door and handing out food and all, which is a mission that should always be in view, but it only is in case of emergencies. I see. So let's kind of keep our eye focused on the future and say, let's create an atmosphere where this happens as a result of relationships, not as an emergency. Well, thank mm -hmm. you both for Beautiful being here. Beautiful words. Yeah. Thank, thank you for you. having Sandy, us. Thank you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you for having well, us. Brenda both McDuffie, of Red Shoes, support the Buffalo Urban League. And Sandy, we'll see you on the next edition I'm of enjoying Community this. Conversation. We'll see you. Presented by Buffalo Health Living Magazine and Defender here on WBBZ. TV. Thank you for watching and joining in the conversation. This special edition of your hometown Health Connection Community Conversations, Heal, Talk, Act, was presented by Buffalo Healthy Living Magazine with support from the Buffalo Federation of Neighborhood Centers, Kyramia Pet Resort, Circuit Clinical, Endeavor Health Services, Medical Society of the County of Erie, the National Federation for Just Communities, People Incorporated, Community Services for Everyone, Horizon Health Services, Spectrum Health and Human Services, Best Self Behavioral Health, and WBBZ-TV.